What's up? It's Ford Thurston, and welcome to Girls and Guitars Part 5. We're going to call this Codependent Blues. Um, today, we're going to do a little musical thing over these changes right here. Actually, to be honest with you, my buddy Jack Roosh, he uh, put a little track out that uh, he was playing this vamp on, and it's bizarre. I have the same kind of change, but it's a little backwards. Mine is... Uh, so... Where you can do both, it's really cool, but that's just basically the rhythm that I'm going to show you the solo over, right? So the change is up uh, A flat major seven, play it there. So four, six, five, five, or six, five, four, three, and then just a minor G minor seven. So three, five, three, 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 and then. So which is you're fretting the uh, third fret then five five one this middle D string you're not touching you can also play F minor You can solo over so you don't have to take your time to download anything to solo along with me playing rhythm for you. Okay. All we're gonna do today, yesterday someone said to me something about the scales and the modes and stuff. I'm not gonna get into all that, man. That's too confusing. I mean, that's confusing for lots of professional players. We're just gonna say this is the scale that I'm using, okay? Watch. Play the scale. Two scales. C minor pentatonic. <laughs> Play the track, and I'm just gonna play along out of those and just praise. And that's the whole thing of my beat. It's got a clap. You recognize it? That's the kind of stuff I'm gonna be doing over this track, okay? So let's let it rip, right? Thank you. 
basically playing those two positions. It's just about picking notes, man. Don't worry always about where are my target notes. You know, I'm listening for melodies most of the time there. I mean... <sighs> talk about the codependent blues. Here we go. All right, so I've done this so many times in my life, and almost everybody I know does this. It's, it's truly crazy. So we get out of a relationship. It doesn't matter. Get out of a relationship or you've been alone for a little while, and then you meet a really cool person. And then you just set, you go up one Friday night, and I've seen this so many times. You'll, you'll meet Friday, and, and then the next day you're together, too. And then, oh my God, Sunday, maybe you don't see each other, but then Monday you see each other. And then Wednesday you see each other. Holy crap, we're on a roll here. You're being everything you wish you could be for the first six months of seeing somebody. You, so you, sometimes, and you know this, your friend that stops calling you, you know, they, they forget all their friends and they put all their energy into this new relationship. And they're together all the time. I've had relationships where I date, go out with somebody and they're literally living at my house by Monday or maybe even the next day. That's happened before. And that's all fine and dandy, but then you stop doing things. Maybe you like to golf. Now you're not golfing all the time. You're playing less guitar. And I'm not saying that it's not great to meet somebody that's a lot of fun and stuff like that, but what you're doing is putting everything else aside. And here is the, 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 the red flag on the whole deal. That's gonna last six months, and then you're gonna you're gonna be with this person, and they're gonna be used to the way that you're portraying the way you are with them. You're with them all the time, and you're all the time together, and it's fun, and you're going to party, you're going to parties, having a great time. And then one morning you wake up and go, man, I miss golfing, and I miss my guitar. Hey, I wonder what Jimmy's doing anymore. What's what's Nancy doing? And you you know blah blah blah. Hey, your friends are talking behind your back saying that you know <laughs> that you, God he went off the deep end with this new relationship. What you need to do is put space and not be codependent in the beginning of your relationships. And I know this because I've done it uh, a bunch as of recently, and it's the only way to keep it real. So this person knows that you like these things. So it's like, keep playing your guitar, stay in touch with your friends, keep golfing, don't spend all the time. It's a slow rise. That way this person, the, the ultimate thing is, is that if you do that, you stop all that stuff and one day you start golfing again, you start going out with your friends rather than them, they're gonna say, what happened? What's wrong? And as soon as that happens, you start having arguments, there's insecurity involved, the whole thing goes to hell. What you need to do is you should have went out on the Friday night, you should have waited till the following Wednesday to go out and then shoot two days a week. That should be the, the, the gamut for the first six months, maybe four or six months. And so after six months, you'll know if you even like this person. So don't be a codependent bluser. You know what I mean? So that's all I have to say about that. Put space in that and be real. Don't be everything you wish you were. Some bull crap, you know? How many times have you not seen that? All right, so I'm gonna play this rhythm for you, ready?
Adam Sport Thurston. Please subscribe below. I get a tip jug from Venmo and PayPal. If you got a buck or two, leave it in the thing and um, help me keep this guitar. I don't want to sell it, man. I got bills, construction, crazy stuff going on. I love you all. See you next time.